Welcome back to Invested, I'm Lockie, and today we'll get Adobe Stock, the software company that's been hit hard recently. Over the past six months, the stock is down over 19.03%, and over the past one month alone, the stock has fallen 13.34% in value. So with a massive pullback in the price of Adobe recently, the question naturally becomes, is the stock finally undervalued, and is there still a buying opportunity present? Well, today, I'm going to be answering that for you. I'm going to be breaking down the business, focusing on all the key factors. It's financial strength, profitability, growth and management, then give you a current valuation and price target for the stock going forward, telling you if Adobe is a buy, hold, or sell at this time. If you enjoy this type of content, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So opening up our screen here, we're going to start off by assessing the financial strength of Adobe. How financially strong is Adobe as a company, and how likely is it that Adobe could endure a financial downturn going forward? Well, if we come down here and have a look at the financial strength metrics, of course, when assessing the financial strength of any large company, there's really one key metric we focus on, and that's the cash to debt ratio. The cash the business currently has on hand to meet their short-term and long-term debts outstanding. And the current cash to debt ratio for Adobe is 1.24, indicating that for every dollar of debt on their balance sheet, they have $1.24 in cash to meet that debt obligation, a fairly advantageous financial position. This cash to debt ratio indicates that if Adobe's management so desired, they can instantaneously pay down all the debt on their balance sheet and still retain the equivalent of 24 cents in cash relative to that one to one ratio to continue to reinvest and grow their operations going forward. So a fairly favorable cash to debt ratio. When you combine this favorable cash to debt ratio with the massive amounts of free cash flow being generated by Adobe subscription revenues on a monthly basis, you begin to realize just how financially strong Adobe is as a company. This great degree of financial strength is accentuated by the high Altman score the company has been assigned. The company has been assigned an Altman score of 14.02, indicating a great degree of safety with the business and very little risk of financial default going forward. In the event of a financial downturn, Adobe is exceptionally well positioned with massive amounts of cash on hand and consistent cash flows flowing in from operations, enabling them not only to endure a financial downturn, but also reinvest and reinvigorate growth through opportunistic acquisitions coming out of a pullback. So on a financial strength basis, by virtue of both cash on hand and massive cash flows flowing in from operations, Adobe is in a fairly advantageous financial position. But that's simply the financial strength of Adobe. Now, let's have a look at profitability. Let's see how profitable Adobe is as a company. So if we come over here to profitability, of course, when assessing the profitability of any large company, there's really four key things we focus on. Number one is the operating margins. Number two, the net margins. Number three, the returns on equity. Number four, the returns on assets. So if we come over here, we're going to start off with the margins. You can see operating margins of 36.76% and net margins of 30.55%. Absolutely outstanding. These are phenomenal margins. Very, very high, indicating a great degree of profitability with the business. And that for every dollar of revenue that comes into Adobe's business, they retain about 30% of that as pure profit. Very, very profitable and very, very appealing from a profitability standpoint. And on a net margins basis alone, Adobe is exceptional appealing from a profitability standpoint. These net margins are absolutely world class. Net margins in excess of 30% are absolutely fantastic and position Adobe as one of the single most profitable companies in the world. But now let's have a look at returns on equity and returns on assets to get an idea how the management of Adobe is allocating their capital. So if we come down here to returns on equity and returns on assets, and of course, when assessing a business based upon these two metrics, we're really looking for returns on equity and returns on assets around 20%. So now let's see what Adobe is producing. Returns on equity of 34.51% and returns on assets of 18.8%. Both fantastic. Returns on equity of 34.51% is absolutely astonishing. This is obviously well above our 20% threshold and indicates not only a great degree of underlying quality in Adobe's business model, but also a great degree of management competency. The management of Adobe are clearly allocating capital well to make high returns on equity, and that's symbolized by this phenomenal returns on equity figure. Returns on assets, of course, is slightly lower. Returns on assets are only 18.8%. Despite this being below our 20% threshold and also below the returns on equity figure, this number is absolutely fine. For a $237 billion company to be making returns on assets of 18.8% consistently is absolutely phenomenal. It's indicative of the low capital cost nature of Adobe's underlying business model. A business model in which their software has been created and distributed, there is very little marginal cost associated with each additional sale made. Adobe simply creates the product and then simply collects the free cash flow from their subscription model, giving them a massive degree of profitability with very little marginal cost and thus exceptional returns on assets are made. Though these returns on assets aren't at our 20% threshold, they're absolutely fine and if they were to continue around 18 to 19% over the next 10 years, that would be absolutely fine, and in fact astonishing for a business of this scale. So on a profitability basis, by virtue of all the metrics we analyze, the profitability of Adobe is absolutely world class. On a financial strength basis, they're well positioned with massive amounts of cash in hand and consistent cash flows flowing in from operations, and on a profitability basis, they're outstanding. But now let's get an idea of how much Adobe is worth as a business, because although it may be a wonderful company, if it's not trading at a fair valuation, then buying into the stock right now could lead to losses in the short to medium term. 
So now let's come down here and have a look at some basic valuation ranks. And of course, when assessing a business utilizing these basic valuation ranks, there's a lot of different ratios we can use to assess the business. We've got the quick ratio, current ratio, cash ratio, PB ratio, PS ratio, all these different fancy, fancy ratios. But when it comes to assessing a business utilizing these simple ratios, there's really only one I use, and that's the PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio. And the current price to earnings ratio for Adobe is 49.84, indicating a massive degree of growth assumption priced into the stock going forward. Investors in the broader market believe that Adobe can continue to grow at an accelerated rate going forward over the next 10 years and beyond. Growth rates of around 20-25% to on both an earnings per share basis and free cash flow basis going forward over the next decade, and that's what this elevated PE indicates. Whether or not this high PE indicates the company is over or undervalued is up for debate, what we are going to do later on is run a full DCF analysis, breaking down the company's earnings per share and free cash flow on a more granular level to give you a better idea of exactly how much the company is worth and exactly how much you should be paying per share for the business. So keep watching for that one. But before we get started on our DCF analysis, I want to break down some basic financial data associated with Adobe. If we come over here, you can see the revenue and net income for Adobe between 2010 and 2021. You can see back in 2010, revenue was around 3,800 and net income of 774. And then in 2021, revenue of 15,780 and net income of 4,822. So you can see very, very impressive growth over the past decade on both a revenue and net income basis. Consistent revenue growth and starting from about 2015 onwards, massive, massive net income growth, of course, with the shift to their subscription model and a greater degree of profitability and thus net income being brought in by the firm. Very, very impressive to see from both a mature company and an exponentially growing company. And it's indicative of a large degree of management competency within their business. Clearly, the management within Adobe are allocating their capital well to stimulate consistent and meaningful revenue growth, and that is very, very appealing from an investment prospect. Coming over here to the cash to debt ratio of the company over time, you can see once again a great degree of financial stability exuded by their cash to debt balance over time. Massive amounts of cash on hand relative to their debt over time. Back in 2010, cash on hand was around 2,468 and debt of 1,522. And then in 2021, cash on hand of 5,798 and debt of 4,673. So every single year for the past decade, with the exception of 2018, Adobe has had cash on hand in excess of their debt load, leaving them in a very, very advantageous financial position. Always having cash in excess of the debt load leaves them in a position to make opportunistic acquisitions and that in the event of a downturn, they'll have enough cash on hand to pay down their debt obligations and then reinvest and stimulate growth coming out of a difficult period. Despite the fairly large amount of debt being employed by the company, I have very little concern associated with this leverage related risk. Some investors may feel as if this is too much debt being used by the company and that this amount of debt on the balance sheet creates a degree of risk with the business, the risk of financial default in the event of a downturn. The way I see it, this isn't the case at all. Adobe has massive consistent free cash flow flowing in from operations, allowing them to pay down these debt obligations and continue to reinvest and expand their business going forward. So on a financial strength basis, I have very little concern with Adobe. Coming down here to returns on capital, you can see fairly consistent returns on capital over the past decade. We did have a drop off in returns on capital in 2013, 14, 15, of course, during the transition to their subscription based model. But once that transition was complete, they're now creating even higher returns on capital than they were before the model transition. Returns on capital anywhere from 6% to 19% at a high in 2020, and thus very, very impressive returns on capital for a business of this size. If these returns on capital were to average out somewhere around 10% going forward over the next decade, that would be absolutely fine. And taking into account the existing maturity and scale of the business, I'm not expecting massive, massive returns on capital, returns on capital of around 10% would be more than satisfactory. So that's some basic financial data associated with Adobe, the PE ratio to give you an idea of what the business may be worth, and also some profitability and financial strength data to give you an idea of how the business is performing. But if we really want to understand what Adobe is worth as a company, and how much we should be paying for each individual share of the stock, then we'd have to run something called a DCF analysis, a discounted cash flow analysis. And as Warren Buffett always says, the value of any business is the cash flow that it will return to its shareholders between now and Judgment Day. And that's exactly what a DCF tells us. We're going to run a DCF on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis to give us an idea of how much earnings the company is bringing in, and how much of that is translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. So coming down here, we're going to start off on an earnings per share basis. And if we come down here, we can see the earnings per share growth rates over the past 10, 5, and 1 year period. Over the past 10 years, it's been around 3.4%, 5 years, 36.7%, and over the past 1 year, a slight decline in earnings of 7.5%. Very uncharacteristic of Adobe. Over the past 10 years, they've had exceptionally consistent growth of a very, very high rate. And yet over the past 1 year, we've seen a slight decline in earnings as the heightened demand for their services weared off post-pandemic. Now, do we believe this continually declining earnings rate will continue going forward over the next decade? Do we believe Adobe's earnings will continue to decline around 7.5% annually going forward over the next 10 years? Absolutely not. I think this is indicative of a one-time drop-off in earnings rather than consistent earnings declines going forward. And thus, given the highly positive secular trends around Adobe as a business, a far more reasonable growth rate would likely be in line with their earnings per share growth rate over the past 10 years. And once more, taking into account the maturity of the business and the potential for a tapering off of growth going forward, we're going to utilize a slightly lower growth rate relative to this 10-year figure. So we're going to input a growth rate of 25%, 
lower than that 30% growth rate going forward over the next 10 years on an earnings per share basis. So growth rate of 25% going forward over the next 10 years, taking into account both the maturity of the business and the favorable runway for growth going forward, then utilizing a discount rate of 8%. 8% of course is the long run return of the stock market, and that's a fair rate at which to discount our cash flows. Then an earnings per share figure of $10, taken down here for a 12 month trailing basis, we come up to a fair value price target for Adobe of $597.44, signifying about 17% short term upside to the stock, and that the stock is trading slightly below its intrinsic value at present. Based upon our earnings per share valuation, Adobe creates an advantageous opportunity for both value investors and long term growth investors looking to pick up a wonderful business trading below its intrinsic value. But that's simply an earnings per share valuation for Adobe. Now, let's have a look at a free cash flow valuation to give us an idea of how much those earnings translate into free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. So coming down here, we're going to switch over to free cash flow. And if we come down here, we can see the free cash flow growth rates over the past 10, 5, and 1 year period. Over the past 10 years, it's been around 22.2%, 5 years, 27.8%, in the past 1 year, 30.7%. So despite the drop off in earnings per share over the past year, they actually did achieve a positive free cash flow growth rate of 30.7%. Very, very favorable. Once more, given the massive amounts of free cash flow already accrued on Adobe's balance sheet. Adobe is inherently a very free cash flow generative business with massive amounts of free cash flow translating onto their balance sheet. I believe going forward a slightly lower free cash flow growth rate relative to our earnings per share growth rate would be justified going forward over the next 10 years. So with that in mind and taking into account the massive amounts of free cash flow already present on Adobe's balance sheet, we're going to utilize a slightly lower growth rate of 20% relative to our 25% growth rate utilized on an earnings per share basis. So utilizing a free cash flow growth rate of 20% going forward over the next 10 years, again with our discount rate of 8%, then our free cash flow per share figure of $14.30, taken down here for a 12 month trailing basis, we come up to a fair value price tag for Adobe, slightly higher, of $602.03, signifying about 17% short term upside of the stock, and that once again, the stock is trading slightly below its intrinsic value. Once again, based upon this free cash flow valuation, there's an advantageous opportunity present for both value investors and long term growth investors. So, as you can see on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis, it appears as if Adobe is trading meaningfully below its intrinsic value, creating an advantageous buying opportunity. But which of these valuations makes more sense for Adobe? Which of these valuations gives us a better idea of exactly how much Adobe is worth and exactly how much we should be paying per share for the business? Well, given the inherent growth nature of Adobe as a company, despite the slight drop of earnings over the past year, Adobe is still very much a growth oriented organization. And given the market and investors tendency more broadly to value growth companies based upon their earnings per share rather than their free cash flow, I would be more inclined to value Adobe on an earnings per share basis rather than a free cash flow basis given its inherent growth nature. So with that in mind, we're going to utilize our earnings per share price target as my current price target for the company. And thus my current price target for Adobe is going to be $597.44, signifying about 17% short term upside to the stock and that once more the stock is trading slightly below its intrinsic value. Going forward, I believe Adobe is exceptionally well positioned to perpetuate meaningful growth going forward over the next decade with highly positive secular trends around the business, ever increasing demand for their services and a wide economic moat relative to other software companies. With quality management, high free cash flow and a firmly entrenched subscription business model, I believe Adobe can perpetuate meaningful growth going forward over the next decade and beyond and I'm very bullish on the future of this wonderful business. Given the notable discount to its intrinsic value the company is currently trading at, for me right now, Adobe stock appears to be a buy. So that was my brief yet somewhat detailed analysis of Adobe stock, a company with outstanding financial strength by virtue of massive amounts of cash on hand and consistent cash flows flowing in from their operations, outstanding profitability with net margins of 30.55%, astonishing returns on equity of 34.51%, and understandable yet still impressive returns on assets of 18.8%. The business appears to be trading slightly below its intrinsic value, creating an advantageous buying opportunity for both value investors and more so for long-term growth investors looking to pick up a wonderful company and hold for the long term. Given the underlying quality of Adobe's business and the favorable secular trends around the business, combined with the current discount to its intrinsic value the business currently trades at, for me right now, Adobe stock appears to be a buy. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you learned something more about Adobe as a business, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below and I'll see if I can get onto it. But until then, thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.